customer called and wanted to know why things are taking so long and I hate being in that position to explain why every time I have some time estimate that it takes three times longer than what I can project and I end up making a lot of excuses it's difficult to explain I don't really know and it's hard to give that as an explanation over and over and over again um, why things take so long but they do this is kind of a random video um, I just got my doors all sized and sanded and I just wanted to show these doors because they turned out well uh, and I wanted to talk about why they turned out well as you can see they are all nice and flat I have not sanded the top surface on these yet they're just sanded on the edge but every door is very nice and flat okay so I'm gonna to try to explain what I did and the steps that I took to make perfectly flat doors when the finished product is all glued up so the material selection was done very carefully and the process started with buying rough cut boards that were kiln dried and then I bring them into the shop and sticker them like this and when you sticker wood that means that you put these little spacers in between so that airspace flows on all sides and the wood dries out a lot quicker that way and more evenly which is important so this is spruce, this is uh, like construction grade material and it is not kiln dried, or it is, but they, they only take it down to like 15% so when I buy it off the rack it's very very wet and uh, it needs more time to sit before I can use it but it's always a good idea to sticker the wood and bring it indoors to your workspace uh, or a heated space so that it can kind of acclimate for a while so this is the first step that I take so this over here is the rough cut poplar that I bought at the hardwood dealer and I use this to make the face frames and the door rails and styles so it comes in rough cut at about an inch thick so this is four quarter rough cut poplar sometimes it's a little bit over an inch so first thing I did uh, was I planed both sides down to a finished dimension of about 15 sixteenths so I did one good pass on each side just to get it a little bit closer to its finished dimension which is 13 sixteenths so this is a door part an extra piece so and then I cut strips about three inches wide so I, I overcut the size about a quarter inch and then I stickered it again and let that sit for another few weeks so I got each piece kind of close to its finished dimension in thickness and width and then let it acclimate with the heat on uh, for as much time as possible I mean you know it's hard to say how much time wood needs you know this wood really came in pretty dry it was dried properly at the mill so I, I didn't really sense that there was any drastic changes going on but it's just a preventative measure just to make sure that you know every piece is kind of stabilized and sometimes there's residual forces that are in the board that will open up 
when you start making cuts and, and separating these areas of grain, sometimes there's, you know, some forces built up that will release. So it's good to cut them into sections close to whatever your finished dimension is going to end up being and let that part kind of reach its equilibrium um, in, in your climate. It's pretty windy today. So that, that was the extra step, or two steps that I took to get the wood in its most stable position. Uh, and at that point, you can begin to really read the stability of each piece. Uh, and every time I would cut a piece on the chop saw, I would test it to see how flat it sits on the table. And so the quality control step occurs, you know, when this wood is being processed on the chop saw and then again on the joiner uh, when I flatten the boards. Um, because I want to select the boards that have the least amount of twist in them occurring already. So any slight a bit of twist in it is set aside and, and, and then used for something else. So that's the step that I take. It takes a lot of time, a lot of extra time processing the material because I'm testing every single piece you know for its, its flatness and, and parallel. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit warped on the edge but it's the twist. You know how things sit flat on the surface which makes the biggest factor. I have a piece here. And I mark it with a W, which stands for wanky. That means this piece is wanky. And you can see it has a twist on it, which is severe. Uh, you would never make a door out of this piece. But this is the kind of thing that, uh, you know, would end up in a factory production line. Because if you were just going to look at this piece of wood for like two seconds, you'd say that's, that's a pretty nice piece of wood. It's got nice straight grain, colors even, there's, you know, no defects in it. You know, it wouldn't catch your eye unless you do this testing step. You can see, oh, you know, it's not sitting flat. And somebody who's got less experience working with wood, they'll be like, oh, well, you know, you got plenty of thickness. We'll just, you know, do a couple passes on the joiner to get it parallel. And then you run it through the planer, and then you have a nice flat piece of wood, right? Without any twist. That's wrong. Okay? It's wrong. And I'll tell you why. Because this piece is not stable. It's twisted because it's always going to be you know, moving with the changing moisture content. So what happens, let's say if this piece is perfectly dry, you get all the twist out of it and you make it parallel, the moisture content's going to change when it rains, okay? It'll soak up some moisture, it will twist again, it'll twist in the opposite direction. So boards that have a naturally occurring twist like this are always going to be moving like that. You can't flatten them out and have it be reliable, okay? That's why the term unstable is used to describe pieces uh, that have warp in them, okay? Because if it's warped, it's going to warp more at some point. It's not stable. It's not going to stay the same. So these type of pieces have to be looked out for and set aside and discarded, used for something else. I could, I could flatten this out and use it for face frame. I could cut it up into thinner strips and use it for cleating. I can repurpose this piece of wood for something else. It'll work perfectly fine. But for a door, if one piece it has a twist in it. it. It will warp the entire frame of the door 
and then you have like you know a corner that like you know just sticks out and it looks like you know you know something's off it, it'll catch your eye you know for this type of cabinetry everything's inset with the face frame and it makes all one even plane so if one door is warped it's going to stick out a plane is going to catch your eye okay so it's important to control this process and make sure that no twisted pieces are used when selecting this material so that's what I did I started with material that was already almost perfectly flat after I ran it through the planer which means that the pieces I selected to make these door parts went through the kiln drawing process at the lumber mill where it was where it was made and then was plain stickered and remained flat during that entire time of drying it out which means that piece of wood is stable it's not going to change it's not going to twist up it's not going to warp it's going to evenly change with moisture content all the wood is going to expand and contract with changing moisture content but the pieces that are going to warp are the pieces that are going to change unevenly it's really the twist that is the worst thing uh, for making door parts so and that's why material selection is such an important part of making doors that don't warp it's important to do that and I will tell you, <laughs> factories get away with their, you know, shortcuts and their dysfunctions because they make this one excuse all the time, which is they tell customers who are unsatisfied with the, you know, the quality of whatever they buy, you know, that it's not their fault, it's the wood's fault. It's a natural process. It's wood. It changes. So when a customer complains about, you know, a door warping or a piece of molding, you know, splitting open or something like that, you know, the, you know, the, the, there's some, you know, secretary whose job it is at these factories to, you know, downplay, you know, the damage and try to explain to people that it's a natural process, it's, you know, it's organic, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a you know, a sign that it's handmade, you know, the imperfections, you know, accentuate the handcraftedness. Uh, you know, the truth is, it's a factory process, and, you know, somebody getting paid, you know, $9 an hour to feed parts into a machine, you know, really doesn't give a shit. <laughs> it doesn't care about the wood. They're not learning anything about it. They're just, you know, treating the wood as you know, uh, you know, an inanimate, organic, inorganic thing, uh, which it is, very organic and very animated. It's always changing. You have to understand, you know, that process to be able to, you know, do your quality control. Okay. I don't. I don't have time to make extra doors. Okay. If I botched my quality control. And I had one or two doors that was warped. That means I'd have to start over, make that door from scratch, set up all my tooling to make all these parts again. That would take a lot of extra time. Or I could just use the warped door, make excuses to the customer, you know, um, you know, and, and play that route, which happens a lot, which makes the difference between you know a good craftsman and somebody you know that's okay making mistakes and just saying it's you know it's natural um, so that's my video today just wanted to show you my perfect doors <laughs> but there's a reason why things come out perfectly it has to be planned controlled and calculated and you know the, the the care that is taken selecting each piece of this you know to make each frame is you know what ends up making the job turn out looking right at the very end and that is the difference and the advantage that small woodworking shops have over big factories is that it's just me working here doing every single step by myself and i can control 
every single piece of wood that goes into my process. So I have a higher success rate, higher reliability rate, and my, my product looks better. Not that that solves all of the problems operating a small business here. You know, uh, the downside is I'm putting a lot more time into this uh, process here and you know it, it takes a special kind of customer to appreciate that and also a special kind of customer willing to pay for that so uh, you know trying to sell that work has its own difficulties uh, it's nice that everything's done right everything turns out perfectly but at the end of the day am I making enough money is it worth all of that effort um, 